Hey, it's Amir Borman, and this is another episode of the Daily Ten segment of the Talent Tango Podcast. I'm here, as usual. I'm here every day. Brother. Yeah, so um, we wanted to talk about today the, the interview hurdles, right? So different steps in the process, and I think what's... Well, the reason we're talking about is it happened today, so we like talking about stuff that just happened during the day, but we had a candidate on who was talking about himself for about a few minutes straight, nonstop. And, you know, at some point you're getting inundated. It's the fire hose of just information without context. It's just like, let me just throw up my entire life story. But you'd really like to interject and ask some questions and really be able to, you know, engage versus just have that person just run on. And I think if that happens, you know, on with a external recruiter, you know, as we're just, you know, doing an initial call, that's okay. But for like a initial phone call with a client or hiring manager, that becomes very challenging. Well, I mean, I think one, you got to know your audience and the medium. So if it's a phone interview, you don't have cues on either side, right? So as the person that's uh, explaining about your background and you're getting interviewed, you got to recognize the other person could be multitasking, right? So attention already is at a premium. So the more you just keep rambling, the less they're going to be engaged in that conversation. So I think I spoke to a candidate today and he was like, can I actually give you my pitch? And I was like, sure, I'll critique it. <laughs> and I kind of gave him some pointers, but to Amir's point, it was just constant, you know, repetitiveness and it was good details, right? So for me in the stage that we're at, I didn't need all those details. And so I think if he was speaking to, you know, a technical manager, those would have been really great to share. And the one piece of advice that I gave him is, don't be scared to pause, take a deep breath, it's okay, and ask the interviewer, would you like me to go into further details or just a simple question to break up kind of your dialogue? I think a lot of times, you know, people think they need to impress. Like they, they start giving you the entire CV because they're like, well, if I can impress this person with everything I've done, that's going to take me farther. And I think sometimes, you know, they have to realize... Less is more. <laughs> Well, sometimes less is more because if, if you're just basically doing a show up and throw up where you're, you're blabbering about everything, again, it's like, how if it is very relevant and it's to the right audience and fantastic, if, if that's to every single, you know, interview in the interview process, it could be a little bit iffy because if it's, you know, let's say you're, you're talking to, you know, somebody who's internal and, and they're looking for soft skills and checking, you know, you know, comms and, and going through some basic technical and fit, and you're not able to understand the level of, of, of the depth that you need for each audience. To me, that, that really slightly telling because I'm like, well, is this, per is this person actually have any EQ? Does he understand? She understand the context of the situation? Do I need to know the inner workings of your code? maybe not if I'm, you know, if I'm recruiting accountants, do I really need to understand how you applied whatever new regulations? No. Yeah. We actually have a client that uh, part of their interview process is to explain things in three distinct steps. Uh, one to like, a, not like a child, but somebody of, you know, elementary school education level. So something very basic, very high level. Then it would be to an internal uh, product partner. So somebody that is technical, but not as technical as the last step would be to explain it at a hiring manager level. So extremely technical. And they do this because they want to see, can you explain it, you know, fundamentally to somebody that doesn't understand anything of what you're talking about and then go up the ladder. So to Amir's point, it is a technique that we do have a client that uses that. It's super important because if you think about it, if you're able to explain something complex, simply you understand the fundamental principles of it. And if you are going to use, you know, even if you, if you are explaining to him very, a lot of technical jargon or whatever your industry lingo is, then, then they're worried about maybe, okay, the, if this person has to communicate outside of just the circle of people they're talking to, right. can they handle the communication? So, you know, I, I'm a firm believer in the least amount of words, simplistic, you know, level you can get it down to explain it and move on. Caveman style. Well, I mean, I don't know if we need to grunt answers, <laughs> but uh, on, on a side note, the best part of, you know, grunting answers. So um, we were actually with my you know, best friend from high school. This is probably like 15 years ago. We were in Europe. We were in uh, Budapest 
cannot read it. I mean, it's, I cannot read Hungarian alphabet. Great country to visit, by the way. It was fantastic fun. But we got there and we both realized that, that it was a massive gap to language barrier. Like we literally <laughs> could not, I mean, it was impossible. And this is like, you know, you didn't travel with your phone because, you know, mobile charge, you know, mobile expenses were so high. You just didn't do other. So we're standing there and we're looking at each other and, and Dave turns around and he just kind of points and grunts at some food. Lo and behold, there we go. We got our order taken, done. <laughs> it so, does work. Okay, man, point and grunt. <laughs> maybe not in phone interviews. Yeah, maybe not that. phone interviews. But again, it's the context, right? Uh, but I think when it comes down to when somebody is engaged at the right level and they're using the right communication, I think it means they understand what they're talking about. If they're using technical language at technical level only, I'm sure they understand what they're doing, but I think it also represents, can they, again, I'm going back to it's a communication flaw of anything else. Right. Yeah. And I think, you know, on phone interviews and just in general and in interviewing in, in, in any capacity, communication is critical, right? Uh, even if you're going to be in the back room, just, you know, hacking at code, like people still want to know that you can communicate and communicate effectively. And I think one other aspect of communication that sometimes people don't think about when especially doing phone interviews is listening as the one that's getting interviewed. You're not, people will maybe butt in and say, you know, and you don't even hear the question getting asked or, oh yeah, that sounds good. And you're trying to, as the interviewer, you know, move the dialogue along, but you don't even hear it because you're so just enamored with getting out what you think you need to get out to be effective that you're not even listening to the cues on the other end. Like, Hey, that's enough, buddy. Let's move on to something else. And then you end up not getting passed to the next round. And you're like, why? I thought I did well. Well, I mean, I think, you know, yeah, I mean, you have to communicate your thoughts. So not only with obviously well-formed, you know, verbal skills, but also how you're structuring your thoughts. So I think when, when people have mentioned communication skills, people are worried about, well, I mean, I speak well. Well, that's not what they're really, they're, they're trying to see, can you actually provide your thoughts in a fashion that's appropriate for the audience? Can you frame your thoughts in a succinct way? Can you answer the question directly? Do you dance around the question because you're a little unsure? So I think there's a million things that sure, people yeah. are checking for. And obviously, if it's a phone interview, you're right. There's no body language, right? And, and, it's, and it's a little bit more, you have to be listening for tone be a little bit more self And if you're not doing a lot of interviewing, you, you might, you know, find yourself in a position where, you know, you might get caught out by just, again, op- you know, doing a show up and throw up and you're just, you know, rambling on for six minutes and the other person is going to lose interest as well. So that's the dangerous part is you might be, be, you know, be at the top of your game. You might be awesome what you do. But if you lose the other person in, in the process, it could be a hiring manager. I mean, it's hard to it's hard to get them back because you're starting to, you know, it's, there's first impressions being made. They're, they're making assessments on you. They're making judgments. If they're like, oh, my God, I'm going to start multitasking while I'm listening, then you're, you're done. Yeah. And then it's really going to be based on how strong of a resume you have. Really, that's what you're you're basing the rest of your candidacy on is how, how strong the CV was. And I think recognizing that this this is a next hurdle, right? This is the phone interview. The next hurdle is to maybe go on site or do a technical interview whatever the case is. So it's recognizing that. And I think also practice, get a friend in front of the mirror, record yourself. Most people have, you know, smartphones these days and just say, okay, so tell me about yourself and then go through that and listen to it yourself or have somebody listen for you as you're doing that. And what's your opinion? I think if you're going through an interview cycle, it's really critical to literally call a friend and say, Hey, let's do a quick mock because that's invaluable, uh, feedback. And also just you know, practice. Yeah, we get, a, I mean, it's funny, you get a lot of candidates who go, I'm just rusty. And they just hopped on for the interview and it and it, and it, it shows. shows and they don't make it pass. And you're like, you're right. Like a, a little bit of, you know, practice, a little bit of uh, just, you know, just getting, uh, you know, the, the rust off would, would be a big change. So, so out there curious, have you ever done that? Have you ever, you know, gone out and done some, you know, just prep mock calls with your, you know, somebody, you know, in front of the mirror, like Arash said, that's, that's not bad. And again, it's step two in the interview process for most companies. So it's a critical step. The phone interview resume, phone interview, go. That's it. Bye-bye.